Welcome to this last video in our series on lifecycle management for ODI. So far we have shown you how to install the VCR for ODI connector and how to use it, namely how to commit objects and scenarios from ODI into Subversion and reversely how to restore them back from Subversion to a work repository in ODI. We have also demonstrated how to install and configure ICANN ALM. We have talked about the return on investment of our solution and explained how to use the free return on investment calculation tool on our website. Finally, in this video, we will show you how to achieve a fully automated ODI development lifecycle. This is done by means of the ODI solution phases. An additional asset in this automation process is ICANN ALM's seamless integration with issue tracking systems. Redbridge has developed three ODI solution phases. One to execute the build process. This phase will retrieve the objects or scenarios out of the VCR and put them in an archive for further deployment use. The second one deploys the archive to an ODI repository. The third phase is an optional phase. It allows you to create the necessary repositories. In this instruction movie, we will not use this phase. To facilitate the setup of the phases, it's recommended to collect the following information. The ODI home location and version, the SVN kit location, the username and passwords for ODI and the master repository, the ODI work repositories, the SIDs of the master and work repositories, and the project names. Parameters can be defined on phase, environment or machine level. The phase parameter takes precedence over the environment parameter, which in turn takes precedence over the machine parameter. There is no general rule to determine on which level you should define the parameters. It depends, for example, on your company standards, on how unique the parameter is, whether it's used in only one phase or in several phases, on how unique the parameter value is. For example, if the value is the same for all environments, you probably want to define it globally on the phase level. If the value is different for each environment, you could specify the value on environment level. If the value is the same for all levels and all environments on a machine, it might be interesting to define the parameter on a machine level. The installation and implementation of the ODI solution phases is done in a few simple steps. First, you import the phases in the ICANN ALM interface and specify the global parameter values in the global administration section. Next, you add the phases to the different environments and if required, you adjust the environment parameters. Let's start with the installation of the phases. If you downloaded and unzipped the LCM for ODI Linux file from our website, the result will look like this. We recommend you to organize your files the following way. Create an ALM data folder at the same level as the ICANN ALM home folder. In that ALM data folder, you create the subfolders ENV and phase scripts. Next, you copy the solution phases and phase tool subfolders from the temporary location where you unzip the file to the ALM data folder. Finally, you unzip the SVN kit zip file. When that's done, you are ready to start the installation of the phases. First of all, you need to import the ODI solution phases in ICANN ALM. For the purpose of this demo, we will only use the copy ODI files and ODI files deployment phases. Phases are imported in the global administration section. On the submenu, you can select phases import or you can click the import link on the phases subpanel. Use the select file button to select the phase you want to import, browse to the location where you copy the solution phases, Select the required phase and click the Open button. As a result, the Import Phase screen will display the information concerning the phase, the file it contains and the phase parameters. Next, click the Import button to confirm the action. You must repeat this procedure for each of the phases you want to use. In our case, we also want to import the ODI files deployment phase. The two phases we imported are now displayed on the Phases Overview. As said before, phases can be defined on phase, machine or environment level. In this demo, we will keep the definition of the parameters as simple as possible. You can find an in-depth explanation of the different ways of defining parameters in the ICANN ALM user guide. If you need advice on a particular situation, you can always contact the ICANN ALM support team. Let's continue. We have imported the phases, 
and next we need to verify and, if needed, modify the default values of the phase parameters. Here you can see an overview of the different parameters you most likely will need to modify in the Global Administration section. As you can see, some parameters are set to mandatory by default. In this context, mandatory means that the parameters will be automatically created when adding the phase to a level or build or deploy environment. To keep things simple for this demo, we will set most of the parameters to mandatory and use as much as possible the same values for the different environments. First, we will edit the global phase parameters for the Oracle Files deployment phase. On the Phases Overview, you click the pencil icon in front of the phase you want to edit. Underneath the Phase Info panel, you will find the list of all defined phase parameters. This list can be sorted alphabetically by clicking the column header. We want to edit the Master Password parameter, so we click the Edit icon in front of it. This will open the Edit Phase Parameter window, specify the value, and click Save. This procedure must be repeated for each of the mandatory parameters. In our case, we also want to adjust the values for the ODI home location, the master repository, the master repository username and the repository SID. To specify the hosts and ports for the ODI master and work repositories, we use the Oracle default values. Obviously, if your value is the same as this value, no modification will be required. If not, you will also have to make those parameters mandatory and modify their default values. In our example, some parameters will be used on all of our deploy environments. Therefore, we want to make those parameters mandatory, so that they will be added automatically to the environments using the phase. The procedure is the same as the previous one, except that we now also have to activate the mandatory option. Let's for example modify the ODI password. Click the Edit icon in front of the parameter, enter the correct values, activate the mandatory option and click the Save button. This also needs to be done for the ODI version, the project names and the SVN kit location. Now all parameter values have been specified for the Oracle Files deploy phase. We also need to modify a parameter for the Copy ODI Files phase, namely the Set Sources parameter. Here the same principle applies. Select the phase from the Phases overview, find the parameter for which you want to modify the value, enter the correct value, set the parameter to mandatory and click Save. We are ready to add the solution phases to our build and deploy environments. This must be done in the Project Administration section. Select your project from the overview, display the Build Environments overview and click the Edit Phases icon. This will show a list of the default icon ALM phases. We now want to remove some of those phases and replace them with the specific ODI solution phases. In this example, we need to remove the Verify Build Script, Execute Script and Transport Deploy Script phases. Next, we will insert the ODI solution phases. To do so, click the Insert Phase link, select the phase that must be inserted, specify its position and the next phase on error and click the Insert button. The Copy ODI Files phase is now added to the Phases Overview. Now let's do the same for the Deploy Environments. First, we display the Deploy Environments Overview. In this case, we only need to delete the Verify Deploy Script and the Execute Script phases. Next, we want to add the Copy ODI Files phase after the Decompress Build Result phase. And finally, we also add the Oracle Files Deployment phase after the Copy ODI Files phase. We have three deploy environments, Test, Acceptance and Production. All actions need to be repeated for the three environments. At the beginning of this demo, we have modified the default values for the mandatory parameters. Some parameters, which have different values for the build and or deploy environments, must also be modified. Let's start with the build environment. On the build environment overview, select the Edit Phases icon and next the View Parameters icon for the phase you want to edit. On the Phase Parameters overview, we see all the parameters. 
As these parameters are not set to mandatory by default, the parameter is available but has not yet been created automatically on the environment. Click the Create Parameter icon in front of the target project dir parameter, enter the correct value and click the Create button. There are also some parameters that need to be modified for the deploy environment. The default value of the Rep ODI action parameter is set to restore all objects, which is correct for the test environment, but for the acceptance and production environments, this value must be modified to restore all scenarios. Also, the value for the work SID parameter needs to be set to the ODI work repository. All parameters have been set, now we are ready to start our build process. As the level is still locked, we first need to verify that all definitions are consistent. To do so, we select Audit Project on the submenu. On the overview, you will see most of the objects we have created. It also displays the build archive of the head project stream, where the future builds will be stored, and the build level containing the build environment on the icon ALM agent. Click the Unlock button and we are ready to build. At the end of our previous movie, we showed how to set up the link with an issue tracking system. As we already had created our project at that stage, the link still needs to be specified in the project definition. Let's quickly do that. In the Project Administration section, we select our project and select the appropriate issue tracking system from the pop-up list in the Issue Tracking System field. To make sure that the issues are automatically connected to a level request, we need to add the issue tracking phase to the project's levels. Note that if the issue tracking system had been defined before the definition of the different levels, this phase, which is an icon ALM core level phase, would have been inserted by default. In our case, we have to add it manually. This is done the same way as when we added the ODI solution phases. Select the project and go to the levels overview, select the edit phases icon in front of the required level and insert the issue tracking phase after the deploy phase. To make it easier to manage your projects, you can add them to the icon ALM desktop. The desktop is your work environment. It gives access to common actions such as creating or verifying a build, verifying the project status or delivering a build to a deploy environment. Select Desktop on the main menu, click the Add to Desktop button and select the project streams you want to add to your work environment. You can now easily create level requests and follow up on the status of your project. For the purpose of this demo, we have made a small modification to an ODI package. We added an extra beep. The test environment still contains the previous version, the one with the single beep. If we now have a look at our development repository, we will see the second beep has indeed been added, but has not yet been deployed to the test repository. First, we need to commit the modification to subversion using the VCR for ODI connector. We select the package to be committed, confirm the commit operation, and in the comment field we add the issue ID OD1. This reference will later on be used to create the automatic link to the issue in the issue tracking system. Now the real work in ICON ALM starts. We will create a build level request using the sources in the subversion repository. On our desktop we click the Request Build icon in the Action column. On the Create Level Request screen, you specify the description and next you click the Create button. On the Level Requests Overview panel, you can click the OID of the Level Request to display the Level Request Details screen. The header of this screen displays the status information. For the moment, it's still running. Let's have a look at the Phase Logs tab page. We refresh the page. The Level Request ended in warning. This is because the debug option is still activated for the level. Let's have a look at the build parameters. We see for example the project name and the build name. On the results tab page we find the project that has been built. If needed you can also download the build result. Another interesting tab page is the issues tab page. 
You will remember that when committing, we have added the issue number OD1 in the comments field. Because Icon ALM is integrated with the Jira issue tracking system, a link has automatically been created with this issue in Jira. We can now simply click the issue ID link and we will be forwarded to the issue page in Jira. In case you have forgotten to add an issue number in the comment field, you can always click the Add Issue link to manually add an issue. Add an existing Jira issue number and click the Create button. And next, click the Refresh button to retrieve the information associated with this issue in Jira. Let's now have a look at the Sources tab. This tab page displays the list of all the sources and their revision numbers in the VCR, which have been used by the current level request. And finally, there is also the Modifications tab, showing the objects that have been modified. Now that we have our build, we can deploy it to the test environment. The procedure is nearly the same as for the build level request. On the desktop, we now click the Deliver icon, we enter a description, select the build we want to deliver and click the Create button. We click the OID to display the details and as you can see, the status is set to Waiting Pre-Approval. Approvals enable a verification moment before executing a level request. The approval must be granted before the execution of the level request can continue. Select Approvals, Outstanding Approvals and approve the level request by clicking the green approval icon. Add a comment if required and click Approve. Let's now go back to the level request overview. There we see that the status is now set to running. The level request has ended successfully. If we now check the phase logs, we can see that the status for all phases is set to successful. Here you can also check the use deploy parameters. If we now go back to our test repository in ODI, we see that our double beep has been deployed to test. To end this demonstration, we would like to show a last functionality, namely the usage of dynamic deploy parameters. If a deploy parameter has been specified as being dynamic, you will be able to choose its value at the moment you create the level request. In this example, the parameter RepODIAction has been specified as a dynamic parameter on the UAT environment. The possible values have been entered separated by a semicolon. The first value in the list will be the default value. If we now want to deliver our build to the acceptance environment, we can select the value of RepODIAction from the drop-down list. Enter a description, select the build to deliver and click the Create button. Here ends our series on lifecycle management for ODI. We have achieved a fully automated lifecycle using ODI as development environment, the VCR for ODI connector to ensure the link between ODI and Subversion, ICON ALM to connect with Subversion and automate the build and deploy process, and on top of that, we made use of the integrated ICON ALM approval system and we established the link with the issue tracking system allowing an easy follow-up of the issues linked to a build or deploy. We hope we convinced you that our solution really makes a difference when it comes to lifecycle management for ODI. It not only guarantees safe storage, accurate versions, cost efficiency and full insight in the development process, it also has a substantial impact on the frequency and quality of the deployments and that way on the time to market. For more information on our company and products, we invite you to visit our website. If you would like to discuss any specific requirements, you can always contact our ODI specialists or participate in one of our webinars. Every Tuesday, we organize two webinars, the first one at 10 a.m. and the other one in the evening at 7 p.m., both Central European time. After the demo, we will take the time to answer any of your questions. Thank you for watching.